All right, this man needs no introduction, but we're going to have him introduce himself anyway. So, name, title, how long you been here at Honda, and uh, why you don't ride dirt bikes anymore? Um, well, my name is Jordan Troxel. I work for the 45 of Colt Nichols. This will be my fifth pro season here under this tent. And as I was just telling you before you started, <laughs> the reason I don't ride a lot in my personal life is because we go to the track three days a week. I work on motorcycles sun up to sundown 28 days a week. So the day that I do get off, you don't want nothing to do with dirt bike? I'm not going to go back to the motorcycle track because then I'm going to be tired. Then I have to come home and I have a type A OCD personality. So I can't let a dirty bike sit in the garage. So then you got to wash it. Then you take it out on your wife. Yes, exactly. Right. So, uh, you know, I just, my day off, I don't want nothing to do with dirt bikes. I'm sorry. So, people, this is real life, okay? Well, this is more about the 45 machine, but this is real life. These get, this is a not even a 9 to 5. This is a everyday, 24-7 type of job. So, I've been busting some of these guys up a little bit today because they don't ride, but I have to understand when they're around it all the time, they don't want to ride dirt bikes like me. Unlike me, I love to ride dirt bikes. Well, we don't get to sit in the office the other three or four days a week and just do absolutely nothing and then get to go to the track three days a week and call that our job. I'm sorry, Kiefer, we're not all spoiled like you. <laughs> he has no idea what the hell I do. But anyway, <laughs> the 45 machine. All right, we're going to make this quick because they got press day. But Ch uh, Kellen's going to do a walk around. Let's talk about Colt's engine. And I know he's been helpful for Chase and kind of helping this thing evolve a little bit. So how does Colt like his engine delivery? Uh, Colt has been a little different than some of the other guys on the team. Coming from the 250, I think we've really had to take a little bit out of this motor for him. That transition into the 450 class, uh, the way this thing drops into rhythms and you have to get a handful to get back out. Uh, I think it was a little aggressive at times. So by just kind of dumbing this thing down a little bit so he can really just put it to the stop when he needs to and not have to worry about it getting away from him was uh, one of the things that we focused on this offseason for Colt. So unlike what most people think, it's just not gobs of front side on these things. It's actually pretty linear and smooth in the in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, I mean, most 450s right out of the box, I mean, they're fast enough for 99% of your population and, and more. So it's not so much about getting horsepower. You can build these things to the moon, but if you can't ride it or it gets out of your out of control when you crack the throttle, then there's no point. All right, let's talk about the chassis. I'm going to knock Honda a little bit right now, but you can okay. stick up for him. Right. Um, in the production form, it feels like it's a rigid chassis. Okay. And in the past, we have heard that the riders, Honda riders, have had trouble in the whoops. So is it the chassis? Am I a bad test rider? Is it a little bit of a rigid frame? What is it like? And has Colt learned to adopt that? Does he like that feeling? Um, give us some little input on that. Have you seen your style? <laughs> no. <laughs> Tell me about my style. Have you seen your lap times? Yes. Yeah, they're not close. So <laughs> what you say, I don't know, it can really be compared to the guys who ride professional Supercross. So it is a little different beast here we're talking about. Um, but yes, that, that is one thing that, you know, right or wrong, maybe we've gotten criticism for. So uh, the team, we've worked really hard this off season, uh, especially with Colt. The first month we did a lot of testing with him, a lot of chassis rigidity stuff, a lot of suspension rigidity stuff, parts, settings, things like that to uh, really try to change the balance and the way this thing goes through there. So <clears throat> I think you've seen Chase say in videos that he's a little bit more happier than he was last year. And uh, you know, Colt doesn't have last year to go off of, but um, I think we've came a little bit in that department and, and helping this thing out this year. Yeah, it looks a lot more settled so far after two rounds. Um, a lot of people are freaking out over the shock. I know it's a little bit of a secret, but what can you tell us about the BFRC on this machine? Uh, we went back and forth between that and the standard body shock this year. Uh, I think with the success Chase had with it in outdoors last year was really kind of an eye-opener for us to open up some other avenues and, and try this thing out in Supercross. And we did. We spent a month going back and forth and, and taking the best of both worlds and trying to combine it into this thing. And I think both guys have been pretty happy with it. What's your favorite part about working on this machine? Obviously, you do it day in and day out, but if there's something that you're doing and it makes you semi-happy, what would that be? Oh man, Kiefer, you got me there. I'll tell you what I don't like is washing bikes. Okay, we established that already. Yeah, and um, for some reason when I build my brakes on race day, I just always put it off, or build day, I just always put it off to the end, I don't know why. So bleeding the brake is the part? Building them. Building. Yeah, I don't so know. So bleeding is not so bad, it's just building them. 
Uh, bleeding safe till Friday, so I usually don't do that until the day before the race. Uh, back to your original question, what is my favorite part about this motorcycle? Or what do you think is the, the prettiest or the most beautiful part on this bike? Well, the guy behind it, for sure. <laughs> That's true. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, that beard is really something. No, man, we're really fortunate. We got a lot of good stuff here at Honda. Uh, a lot of good works parts that are extremely reliable and, and sturdy for us. Our triple clamps, our hubs are some of the big things that, um, you know, I think I kind of take for granted as far as uh, the parts that I get to work with every day and the things that I get to put on this motorcycle. So it's really hard to pick just one. Um, we have a lot of cool things and uh, now I'm just happy to be here still building this thing. Can I say my favorite thing? And it's not even, you can't even see it. I've, I've seen the wire harnesses on these things and it's a beautiful work of art of how it's all laid out. Unlike the production one, which is, it's, it's fine, but it's not like what you guys do here. So can you tell us a little bit the process of getting that dialed in? Yeah, that's one of the things most of these guys can't really see is uh, our wiring under this, underneath this motorcycle has came a long way in the last several years. Part of that is um, when those 250 boys came over from Geico, they had a lot of different stuff that they were doing and uh, pushed us to implement some new things with Japan. And ultimately it's helped us clean a lot of wiring up on this thing and simplify everything. So we got a lot of good guys at the shop who really been helping us in the last two years kind of develop that unfortunately you guys can't see it but that is one of the things i'm happiest about this year with our motorcycle two questions and we're out is colt a softer suspension type of guy versus chase is he stiffer where are we at between the two you have to be surprised they're really close uh, chase is a little bit stiffer just because of his size but uh, i would say the ratio to the amount of weight that chase has over colt it's closer than you might think one thing that colt is the pickiest about on his motorcycle you're trying to dial him in but he's saying you know what jordan that's off i feel like i want to change something what is he a pain in the ass about uh i would say just um it's pretty mellow i guess the balance of the motorcycle um coming from kind of a choppered out bike that he was on before with that yamaha having such a, a high front end low rear end stiff feel with that air fork just getting the the balance on this thing right adjusting to the spring fork so since the sag numbers and fork height changes uh, I would say it would be the most critical for him to try to keep the balance correct. One of the most fun guys to be around. He's one of the most happiest, you know. Right now, we, we, just got, we just got him after MXA, so, you know, he's a little bit frustrated. All the time, look, look at that smile, people. I'm happy all the time. Just don't bring a vet rider in here talking about my chassis and supercross whoops when he can't even hit them. Come on. <laughs> that is, hey, I have no comeback for that. I can't hit him, so I, I'm a nobody. I'm talking about it, so that's, I concur. Uh, the 45, Colt Nichols, Jordan, thank you very much, and uh, beautiful work. No worries. Thank you, guys.